Welcome to an exploration of Confucianism. We're discovering its origins, key principles, and lasting impact in our society, diving deep into the fascinating ancient philosophy's journey to modernity. Diving right into the essence of Confucianism, we find that its roots lie within the turmoil experienced during the decline of the Zhou dynasty. Rapid territorial expansion brought administrative challenges that weakened central control and fragmented governance into a system known as Fengjian, akin to feudalism. This political disintegration created a vacuum within the social and moral order that had shaped the society up until this point. Confucian philosophy emerged as a response to this chaos, advocating for the ideal of order through rights, hierarchical respect, and filial piety it sought to replenish the societal frameworks that had been eroded. So strong were these tenets that they were recognized as the mandate of heaven, solidifying the moral rightness of rulers that embraced them. But the philosophical journey didn't end there. The influence of Confucian values extended deeply into the governance and ethics of East Asia. Contemporary societies that agilely adapted these principles exhibited harmonious social structures and flourished under clear moral and ethical frameworks. Lastly, don't underestimate the role of education in spreading these philosophical ideals. It played an instrumental role in disseminating Confucian thought throughout the region, contributing to a significant transformation in societal norms, particularly during the Han Dynasty. This era was a clear testament to the power of philosophy to rectify chaos, marking it as one of the most pivotal moves in ancient Chinese history. Confucius, the venerable philosopher, profoundly relied on two central tenets in his teachings, carrying a deep and lasting effect on the world. Cross-culturally adapted, these concepts still echo with resounding relevance in the present day. The philosophy's backbone lies in Ren, embodying the cardinal virtue of benevolence, underscoring empathy and kindness for any virtuous ruler. Complementing Ren is Li, the harmony-inducing proper conduct, demonstrating the significance of respect and righteousness in all actions, cementing social solidarity. This philosophical approach marries moral integrity and hierarchical respect, seamlessly integrated into governance. Confucianism's influence isn't confined to ancient China, but has robustly navigated historical transitions molding modern societies across East Asia and beyond. Moreover, littered with rich institutes globally, its teachings illustrate its enduring resonance, comfortably commingling with Buddhism and Taoism tenets over time. Suffused with Buddhist and Taoist elements, the adaptable philosophy has not stagnated but broadened its spectrum tackling complex societal issues with nuance and depth. This adaptability underscores yet again the timelessness of Confucian philosophy, continually resounding and reaffirming its crucial relevance, centuries after its inception. Unpacking Confucius's teachings brings us to the discovery of Ren, embodying benevolent interactions steeped in empathy and kindness. Imagine Ren as a moral compass guiding us towards genuine human connections. But Ren is not alone in leading us on the path of virtue. Here is where Li steps in, symbolizing proper conduct in our day-to-day -day interactions. Picture Li as an etiquette guide, directing us towards respectful actions that fortify societal solidarity. Similarly important is Xin, encapsulating trustworthiness and integrity. Imagine holding Xin in one hand and Li in the other. Balancing both, we open doors to harmony across various life scenarios, including the workplace. Integral to a harmonious work environment is the application of these virtues. For instance, offering sincere, culturally mindful feedback knits stronger bonds among colleagues, promoting an atmosphere that breeds respect and understanding. Such practical deployments unravel the vibrant potential of Confucian virtues, transforming these ancient teachings from ink on parchment to beacons in our modern world. Confucian philosophy emphasizes harmony, achieved by recognizing and fulfilling one's role in five pivotal relationships, ruler and subject, parent and child, husband and wife, older and younger siblings, and friend to friend. Exceptional is the ruler-subject relationship, where a balance between ethical governance and loyalty creates societal equilibrium. Imagine Emperor Wen of the Sui dynasty. He embodies this ideal, reducing tax burdens on his subjects, fortifying their loyalty. A ricochet into modern times reveals Lee Kuan Yew of Singapore, 
whose leadership fused Confucian principles with societal progress. However, this isn't a story resigned to the confines of history books. Its echoes pervade our lives today. Consider mentor-mentee dynamics, a microcosm mirroring Confucian reciprocity's ethos. The oft-experienced exchange, where loyalty nurtures opportunities for growth, personifies the profuse vitality of Confucian teachings even today. Thus, Confucian social order becomes more than an archaic philosophical construct. It resonates in contemporary governance models and interpersonal relationships, asserting its timeless influence. In the Han Dynasty, a philosophical dawn broke. The ruling class, headed by Emperor Wu, began distancing themselves from the rigidities of legalism, leaning instead towards the inclusive embrace of Confucian ethics. Ethical conduct and filial piety were prioritized over punitive laws, an ethos that bled into all aspects of daily life. Emperor Wu's reign heralded the birth of the Imperial University in 124 BCE, marking a significant milestone. Here, the code of Confucian philosophy pervaded campus walls, educating officials not only in governance but the core values of empathy, integrity, and societal harmony. These philosophical leanings were not confined to academia. They informed a series of reforms that transformed the nation's legal and bureaucratic landscapes. Harsh penalties yielded to rehabilitative measures, embedding a compassionate approach to justice. Bureaucracy, too, began embodying the empathetic principles of the dynasty's newfound moral compass. Thus, Confucianism ushered in a significant shift from legalism's stark punitive structure to a system where morality governed. This transition underpinned governance during the Han Dynasty, setting a precedent for centuries to come and solidifying Confucianism's enduring legacy in Chinese bureaucracy and culture. Li, the foundation stone of Confucian harmony, dotes not on grand gestures but on everyday customs. Picture the bustling kitchen before a family dinner or the solemn silence of ancestor worship. Li transforms these seemingly ordinary moments into reinforcing respect and continuity. Excavating deeper into Confucian muzzle, we find five cardinal relationships pulsating at its heart, projecting societal solidarity. Li here manifests as rituals celebrating family dinners and ancestor worship, knitting generations in the warm cocoon of shared values and reciprocal respect. Fast-forwarding to modern times, we notice Confucian rituals nimbly adapting to the Internet age, with virtual ancestor worships inviting global participation. Respect for elders doesn't get confined within physical proximity. It transcends boundaries, nurturing generations across continents. Through screens, traditional rituals evolve to create a virtual bridge across distances, nurturing a sense of belonging in the global diaspora. Thereby, these rituals continue to strengthen family bonds, fostering a unique harmony of reverence for traditions alongside co-working with tech innovations. China, known for its rich philosophical heritage, provides us with a triad of thought systems, namely Confucianism, Taoism, and legalism, each with unique perspectives on societal order. Confucianism stands out, advocating the importance of moral leadership, propelling society towards stability through virtue. Legalism, on the other hand, poses a stark contrast, favoring strict laws and order to shape society. This approach, while promoting efficiency, often leads to discontent due to excessive rigidity. Taoism, the third pillar, takes yet another route, calling for leadership to embrace simplicity and work with the flow of nature, creating a harmonious, less complicated societal framework. These philosophies, while varied, touch upon aspects of societal governance and lifestyle, presenting divergent views on human conduct and societal organization. Emphasizing family values while selectively encouraging or minimizing state interference, they have played significant roles in sculpturing the social norms and laws that we see in Chinese culture to this day. A rich interplay often exists between these competing philosophies, each advocating a distinct approach to societal harmony, shaping different facets of Chinese society and its diaspora world over. Emperor Wu of Han transformed the landscape of state ideology by catapulting Confucianism to the forefront. Intent on molding officials in the ethereal mold of integrity and ethical conduct, he established the Imperial University in 124 BCE. A hub for higher learning, this institution instilled Confucian ethics as paramount virtues for aspiring officials. Coupled with this significant move, 
The implementation of civil service exams further echoed the ecosystem where Confucian philosophy was not just an abstract concept, but rather a guiding principle of governance. The reverberations of this philosophy weren't confined to governance. Legal reforms mirrored Confucian tenets that heartened empathetic judgments and virtuous conduct as fundamentals of a justice system. A departure from the stern, punitive Qin dynasty, Han Law was seen embracing a compassionate stance routed in Confucian virtues. Confucianism didn't stop at the Chinese borders. Propelled by the Silk Road, it etched a selection of its principles upon Asian societies. Interestingly, these values were woven into the fabric of social hierarchy and family structures. Coupling this with the ideal of filial piety, Confucianism scripted societal harmony. Confucianism whispered in corridors of learning too, contributing to ethical and moral development of individuals thereby shaping personal values and societies at large. Confucianism's influence has not just shaped societies through the centuries, but also permeates our contemporary frameworks. Its tenets manifest in ways that may be surprising. Education systems in modern South Korea and China, for example, are steeped in Confucian ideals of respect for educators and the pursuit of knowledge. This alignment fosters academic excellence and a deep pedagogical reverence. Globally, Confucius Institutes strive to propound the Confucian virtues of harmony and respect, vitalizing cultural exchange through language lessons and cultural activities. These institutions promote a universal understanding of Chinese philosophy and culture, bearing testament to Confucianism's enduring relevance. Notably, in the world of business and governance, East Asian corporate cultures and governmental policies increasingly draw from Confucian ethics. They reflect a persistent concentration on social stability and benevolent leadership, underscoring the role of integrity, justly striking a balance between profitability and corporate social responsibility. You see, the lived experience of this philosophy goes beyond mere theory, tangible in the operations of modern societies, as a testament to the time-defying wisdom of Confucianism. Confucianism did not remain localized, but expanded its wisdom across cultures and time periods. Consider Japan's Bushido, the Samurai Code of Honor. This code of self-discipline, morality, and respect for authority mirrors the essence of Confucian values, demonstrating the philosophy's adaptability and global influence. Further, Confucian principles morphed modern governance systems. Singapore's meritocracy, emphasizing talent and virtue over status, echoes Confucian ideals, emphasizing how ancient teachings can be applied to improve contemporary societal structures. Moving past the boundaries of authority, Confucianism offers a guide for ethical leadership and harmony in society. Embracing these ancient teachings, we may find solutions to critical issues like climate change and social inequality. Thus, Confucianism, originating in the crucible of the Zhou dynasty and embraced as a state ideology in the Han dynasty, has transformed into a globally embedded ethos, harmoniously intertwining with modernity and shaping the world's cultural, ethical, and governance landscapes. It conveys a timely message. Ancient wisdom, when applied with astute and respectful adaptation, can still guide us towards a harmonious, just, and resilient world.